Hello Gunpla fans, this is Joe of Joe's Gunpla here with another video. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people asking uh, on message boards and Facebook and things like that how to move a large collection of Gunpla. Um, now I would consider a large collection anything over like 30 kits because you've got a lot of boxes. Um, but uh, for those of you who, who don't already know, and I'm sure most of you do know, I have a current collection of over 400 models. Uh, and the last time I moved, I was around maybe 350 or so. Um, so I have quite a bit of experience uh, moving a large collection of kits. And uh, I can safely say that the last time I moved, as a matter of fact, every time I have moved, um, I have not once lost a kit, I have not once lost any parts, and I have not once uh, had anything break. So, uh, I've been pretty successful with moving a large collection. Um, so, I just wanted to go ahead and explain uh, my method of moving Gunpla. Uh, before I get started on that, though, I want to stress that um, if you are very obsessed with your models, um, if you care a lot about them, uh, and I know some of you, some of you are, some of you aren't as obsessed as I am with your kits. You know, a lot of us will view our kits not just, of course, as toys. Everyone knows they're not toys, but, um, and they're, sometimes they're not even just models. A lot of times they're works of art, you know, to whoever built them. So, you know, you've put a lot of money into the kits and the supplies. You've put a lot of time and effort and creativity and work into these kits. You want them to survive the trip. Okay. So, don't let some mover move your models. Don't expect them to take care of your stuff. Like... You know, they are paid to make sure stuff gets there without breaking, but they're not going to care in the long run if a piece of plastic breaks. Um, I would even go so far as to say don't even trust your friends and family to move your kits because they're not you and they don't understand. They don't understand that connection. Um... Last time I moved, the only other person I trusted to move my kits was my fiance, and that was only because, number one, she has built models and she understands, but number two, she knows how much they mean to me, um, and she was also under my watchful eye the entire time. Um, if she had lost or broken anything, there would have been a fight, um, if it would have been just a mover, which we didn't hire any movers, but like if just a mover lost or broke one of my kits, uh, I probably would have been sued for punching the guy out because I would have flipped my shit. Um, so you know that's that's how I view it. I mean they're they're priceless to me. So move your own kits. I would suggest putting them in your car that you are driving. Um, if you happen to be driving the moving truck, then put them in there with you, or uh, I'm going to say pack them last, because you want them right at the end where you can grab them first and go put them away, um, but try to keep them in your back seat if you can, because it'll be a far less bumpy ride than in the back of a truck. Okay. Okay. Moving on to actual storage of the kits. Um, what I've done here is I've kind of illustrated how I store my models. Um, for example, in my Master Grade Real Type G Armor box, I have the flying armor that came with the kit. I also have like the Real Type Gundam that came with the kit. But I've also packed things in there that are related. So I have like Gundam 1.0. Gundam 1.5, Gundam 2.0, and then the G3 1.0, and then the G3 2.0, and then, like, all the accessories, 
I just recently started doing this. I didn't do this last time I moved. Um, but I've just recently started going through and bagging all the accessories according to kit. So that if the, I've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six Gundams with accessories, I'm going to have six bags with accessories. That could be beam saber handles, blades, guns, etc., etc. Uh, so that's how I store my kits. As an example of that, I've actually got one opened up because I'm in the process of bagging accessories. But, you know, I store multiple kits per box. That sort of thing. And yeah, they're going to get scratched up and whatnot, but, like, I don't... I don't personally paint my kits all the time, so that doesn't bother me too much. If it bothers you, they're probably already wrapped in tissue paper. So, that's how I store my kits. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a big box such as the real grade, or the real type G Armor Master Grade, um, and we're going to use that, you can't see what I'm doing, as a base. Okay, and we're going to put that here on the bottom. Master Grade, oops, Master Grade, real type G armor. Okay. Next we're going to take some other boxes and uh, start stacking them up. These could be your master grades. These could be high grades. These could be any scale. As long as the bo boxes fit from end to end, um, you could do two. You could do three if you have to. Um, the main thing here is you want it to fit flush here on the sides, but then at the top, your, your last kits that you put on top, it doesn't matter how high they are in the middle, but you want these to be flush. Okay, so now you've got your stack of boxes. Next thing you're going to do is I want you to go and buy a bunch of rope. It's really cheap at Walmart. Go ahead and buy like yards of it because you're going to need it. If you've got a large collection, if you've got like three or four of these stacks or even more like I did, you're going to want a lot of rope. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your rope and you're going to start here at the top, bring it around one side, flip it up over here down the under, or, I'm sorry, underneath the bottom, come back up, wrap it around, bring it around this way all the way around the bottom back up to the top okay and then you're going to come here and you're going to f uh, bring it under the rope here loop it up and around okay and then you're going to come up behind again loop it through again and there you go um, that's probably not exactly how it's supposed to go I'm going to link in the description to uh, a knot tying website that is going to show you how to bundle like books or something like that but the same concept applies basically what you want here is this support here is going to keep this bundle or this stack you know uh, tight and this one here is going to keep this stack tight from uh, the front and the back on each one and then you've got this one here that's going to keep it tight from the top, the bottom, and the sides. So nothing's going to fall out sideways, and nothing's going to fall out front to back from either stack. So that's what you want to do. And these bundles, because they've got a rope here, they're easy to carry. You can carry two at a time bring them downstairs if you're on the upper floor apartment like I was and uh, put them in the back seat of your car and you're good to go. Um, the nice thing about this is you're not going to lose a little box if you've got this all bundled correctly. Um, you know, you're not going to have one box fall out and get lost or stepped on or whatever in the move. Because it's a lot harder to lose a big bundle of boxes than it is to lose one or two individuals.
So I hope this helped. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, leave a comment below. Um, and I would just like to say good luck with your move if you are in the process of moving. And until next time, happy building, and please drive safe.